This is Duke University. We have two political parties that can't seem to find their way to compromise. We have branches of government that cannot cooperate effectively together. And all of it, everything I've talked about thus far, leads to this inchoate sense in the United States that we ought to build walls. That we ought to isolate ourselves. They ought to come home. We ought to walk away from NATO. I'm not making a political comment here. It's the wrong thing to do. The world will come and find us just as surely as that airplane came and found me in the Pentagon 16 years ago. So the real question is, what do you think about it? What, what should we be doing? How can NATO play an effective role in this turbulent world? And are there opportunities for us to create real security through this alliance, through our leadership in it? I would argue there are. I was uh, driving over here today, and I, my driver uh, said, well, you know, I see you're an admiral. What, what did you do? Uh, and I said, well, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but I said, I was the supreme allied commander of NATO. And he said, oh, okay, yeah, I know NATO, that's great. So what did you think of your boss, Kofi Annan? <laughs> <laughs> so of course he was thinking of the United Nations, but I gotta say, only around Duke is your cab driver actually know who the Secretary General of the United Nations is. <laughs> So just on the possibility that not everyone here knows everything there is to know about NATO, let me give you NATO in, in five sentences. It's 29 nations. It's 52% of the world's gross domestic product. Think about that for a minute. 29 nations, 52% of the world's GDP. It's 28,000 military aircraft. It's 800 ocean-going ships. It's 50 long-range air defense aircraft called AWACS. It is, without question, the richest, most effective military alliance in history. And in particular, its treasure is three million men and women under arms. Three million. Almost all of whom are volunteers. So this is an extraordinarily capable international organization. That's the good news. The challenge, as that table implies for you, is that, and I sat at that table week after week after week for four years as the military advisor. That's what the Supreme Allied Commander is. You are the military advisor to the political leaders. So I would go to that table and brief it, and it's complicated to have 28, now 29 nations constantly in dialogue about big important issues in Afghanistan and Syria and Libya. Very, very challenging. So the good news is tremendous capability. The challenge is it's a consensus-driven organization, which means one nation can put a spoke in the gears. 